Hey guys, this is another video for our nature and environment in Japan playlist. So we've already made videos previously about earthquakes in Japan. We made them before the Tohoku disaster and then after the Tohoku disaster more people were asking questions about it and were showing more interest in it. We covered it a couple of times after that as well. Just wanted to show you something that you might not have seen before. Just have a look at this. This is a list of the earthquakes that happened in Japan in the last seven days. So I think you'll find there's 29 there, 29 in the last seven days, which is pretty much average because Japan averages about 1,500 earthquakes a year. So 1,500 earthquakes a year. So of those 30 or those 29 that we had in the last seven days, we only really felt one in central Japan. There's only one of them that we really felt. And quite often if you're doing something, those of you who haven't lived in earthquake areas, quite often if you're doing something like driving the car or, or moving around or something, you might not notice at all if it's just a, a, a mild one. Or if you're, you're a fair way from the epicenter, you might not notice at all. So of those the, uh, 29 in the last week there was only one and that was at three o'clock this morning or about three o'clock this morning and that woke us up because the whole house was rattling and shaking and moving around but it wasn't for very long it was only a fairly short one it only went on for about probably 30 seconds and it stopped so those of you who haven't lived in earthquake areas before it is quite a, an amazing experience to have everything move if you've only experienced sort of thunderstorms with high winds and things like that, you might have felt buildings move a little bit in, wind, in high wind before, but it's quite an amazing experience to be somewhere where everything moves, including the ground. As far as worrying about it, if you're coming to Japan for a visit or you're going to be spending some time in Japan, statistically, the chances of you being killed or injured in an earthquake here is pretty low. As you can imagine from, if you look at there's 127 million people living here and how many people die due to earthquakes here. It's a lot of course, but statistically your chances are pretty low. Particularly if you're living or staying in a modern building. So if you're in a building after the uh, Nara earthquake of 98 or somewhere in the 90s, there was a big, big earthquake down near Nara. And, and after that, the building standards in Japan were strengthened or made more strict. So buildings had to be more earthquake proof. And buildings made after that are really strong and designed to flex and, and, and bend and, and so on in, in earthquakes. So if you're in a modern building when you're here, uh, even if there is a big earthquake, chances are you'll just you'll just feel it swaying backwards and forwards and it'll stop and it'll be all good. So older buildings, of course, older houses and so on are, are the ones that are most susceptible. The older houses in particular with their big heavy roofs and their fairly light walls are susceptible to collapse in earthquakes. So if you're in one of those, you might, might have to, uh, you'll have to be, be, be aware of that. Uh, other than that, it, in an earthquake, it's, it's obviously those of you who aren't used to them, when, you, when it first happens, quite a, it, it quite often takes some time for the mind to get around what's actually happening. Once you realise that, if it's a really mild one, you're probably better off just staying where you are. Research has shown that if you're next to something large, People used to say get under tables and get under things, whereas some modern research is actually showing that getting under things is not necessarily a good idea. Getting beside things is often a better idea because the getting that thing that you get under might be forced down by some heavy weight on top of it and you might be crushed under it. Whereas if you're beside it, quite often there's a, a triangle of safety where you could be safer if you're just lying beside the big thing. So there's something to keep in mind if there's a big cupboard in the room or some big piece of furniture in the room, just lie down beside that. <laughs> um, usually they're so fast though that you don't get time, usually have time to go very far. So any big extensive plans about going outside and down those stairs and over there and so on, usually you don't have time. The Tohoku earthquake lasted a couple of minutes. So we had a fair bit of time 
to think about that one, but the people that were where it was really big, obviously, you know, it was it was on them straight away. And that's the other thing, the difference that between uh, earthquakes and, and uh, cyclones or typhoons or fire or anything else is that you don't get the warning. You know, those people who live in bushfire areas around the world know that it, usually you have hours of warning because the bushfires slowly approaches, but and the same with typhoons and cyclones and, and all that sort of thing, hurricanes. But obviously, obviously earthquake, there's zero warning. So there's no time for preparation. One moment everything's normal, the next moment everything's rattling around. So there's that. But again, statistically, it's not really worth worrying about terribly much because the chances of being hurt one's pretty remote. The other aspect, of course, is the, is the tsunami aspect, which... After Tohoku, there's a lot more marking and so on around Japan where there'll be signs that point to the nearest uh, tsunami or the highest point, evacuation point, if there's a tsunami and so on. And there's buildings, lots of buildings we've shown you before, quite common for buildings now to have markings on them, telling you exactly how high above sea level that building is. So there's a lot more awareness like that. But again, unless you're below about 10 meters above sea level which we are here you probably don't have anything to worry about anyway from tsunami so again not anything to be terribly worried about although a slight awareness of it is obviously a good idea if you're in an area like this you can see the ocean out there we're right beside the ocean here so if there is a tsunami warning usually tsunami warnings come up on tv and on radio and in the local area like this there'd be sirens sounding that si sound of siren uh, like an air raid siren Brrr, and, and if necessary follow that up with uh, a voice announcement telling you to get to higher ground so tsunamis usually interestingly usually you do have a bit of time with the tsunami so that gives you a little bit of time to get moving so so yeah it's interesting it is interesting I think a lot of people will be surprised to find that you know Japan has 1500 earthquakes a year they'd probably be surprised to hear that but as we've sort of pointed out you, you'll probably only feel one a week or less and it's usually if you're not moving the, the slight ones you'll be sitting doing something and you'll notice that your glass is shaking or you'll hear a little bit of a rattling noise in the window or something and you'll notice that oh yeah well, something's a, a light fitting is swinging or something like that 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 sometimes happens little mild ones and of course the bigger ones when the big ones happen like, like like the one that the one that woke us up this morning there's no missing them you know that was a fairly i think it was about a three or you can see yourself have a look about three o'clock this morning on that on that chart it was about a three and there was no missing that one that was uh, the whole house was wobbling from side to side and the windows and doors were rattling and because we're in an old house those of you who've seen the old farmhouse videos on the buying house in japan playlist will know the old house and it makes a lot of noise in, a, in an earthquake so you, you don't sleep through that usually so anyway there it was and there was some other videos we made previously on our nature and environment playlist talking about tsunami and talking about tsunami and talking about earthquakes so anybody who's interested um, by all means have a look at those videos a little bit more information there we had one one video there we actually made before the tsunami before Tohoku and we talked about the tsunamis we showed tsunami walls like this one beside us here and and showed you a few other things about tsunami and earthquake on that one that might be interesting to some people as well when you're watching that one just keep in mind we made that before the Tohoku disaster so turned out to be more relevant than we realized when we made it so anyway hope that was interesting to some people we'll finish this video approaching the big tsunami wall that we showed you previously there's the big tsunami wall and the big tsunami doors appropriate timing to finish this video isn't it more videos coming soon